What's up, dudes and dudes in the air? And my name's Seth, and we are back again for another trove. You know, ignore the screenshot thing in the top right. We are doing Ultra Daughter of the Moon today, and hopefully, we're gonna be able to do it as efficiently as possible because my goodness gracious, things can go horribly wrong. Hi, how y'all doing? Hope you're doing fantastically wonderful. Did I already say that? Probably, I don't know, I'm very distracted right now because I kind of had to rush and start recording like immediately because some psycho ended up activating this right away. Yes, so this is Ultra Daughter of the Moon, everybody. Are you not excited to see how dangerous she actually is? It's like the white whale. We have to stab it in the face a million zillion times. I don't know why she's not attacking back, but we got a pretty killer crew, if I do say. Now, here's a fun story, everybody. First time I ended up coming to Ultra Daughter of the Moon, it took a million zillion years for us to actually get to it, and the group that we had was not very reliable. And because of that, everybody ended up dying on Daughter of the Moon's final phase because when she throws down her gun, it's actually causing quite a bit of damage, and there's very few people, some people can, but not really that many, uh, that can actually tank out her gun. I gotta swap over my flasks again because I completely forgot. Uh, and anyways, the group that we were with the first time that we were at Ultra Daughter didn't actually walk away from the gun because everybody's like really overly confident and thinks they're like super duper strong and stuff like that when ultimately it's a great idea move away from her gun people like seriously it's the only strategy that you can really do also if she has her sword out and does her kind of yeah where she marks the ground that's a one shot kill no matter what even if you end up having death defying like seriously so you gotta watch out for that one so like right now move away from the gun uh unless we end up rarely having somebody who can actually tank it now Back to the story, of course, is uh, they were kind of holding everybody near the gun and everybody ended up dying except for this guy, because me smarty, Scythe Poo smart one. Um, and yeah, needless to say, it took like half an hour, but I soloed Ultra Daughter of the Moon in her final phase. It was, <laughs> it was not fun, like seriously, because Daughter in herself, like it's been a million zillion years since we actually fought her on camera. And I gotta say, she's, she's an easy boss. Like the hard part of Shadow Towers is actually getting to the boss. And one of the strongest enemies in the game, of course, is uh, Pinata, mostly just because of the amount of minions that he ends up having. If you didn't already check out, uh, there's already a video I did recently with Ultra Pinata, so you can click the card in the top right hand corner of the screen to check that out. But needless to say, the minions are the biggest problem. Uh, and that's the reason why Pinata is the strongest. Now, as far as daughter, you can actually kite her no problem because there's not really anything to deal with. Now, if you're new to like video games and stuff, kiting pretty much means I don't know what the actual term means, but it's just kind of like like a kite. You know, like flying a kite, where you're kind of pulling the boss in different directions so that you have the advantage in the battle. So right now, the only thing that you really need to worry about for her on this uh, last form is actually the farting gas that shows up. You can hear that somebody ended up dying right there. Uh, and then her chakra, which you don't really need to have, like there's not really that much of a problem with that because you can usually just jump out of the way. Uh, and then there's just her Kamehameha and her Hadoukens, which she always does to her left. So if you have her chasing you, it's actually really, really easy to dodge all of her attacks because at this final phase, you can stand right in her face and outside of the chakra, there's not really anything that can hurt you because that's the only one, like that counts as her melee attack, I guess I would say. And then as far as her beams of light go, you would just slightly step to the left, slightly step to the left over and over again. And then it should be no problem. It should just be GG, except for her smoke clouds. And those unfortunately are very unpredictable. Um, I don't know if it's like, I, I wouldn't say it's strategy, I would just say that it's unpredictable and that's all there is to it, especially the fact that they last on the ground for like a million zillion years, so eventually when things get a little bit hazy or smoky in this uh, instance right here, normally we would be luring her out of the smoke, but it seems like whoever's in there actually, you know, holding her in place. Maybe it's a dead candy barb or something like that, which I'm not really gonna reveal the tip of the candy barb because we don't want it patched. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, yeah. So we're getting her very, very close to being dead right now. 
Somebody just got shrecked. I think that's Chrono. Yeah, Chrono Zilla ended up getting destroyed. So it looks like once again, I, old Scythe Poop's probably gonna end up having to solo her, which I don't particularly like. And again, the biggest point that I don't like about this boss in general is the fact that, like, look at all those VFX. You can't see her. You know? Oh, we got an Ice Sage. That's why she's so slow. She, that should be no problem so long as the Ice Sage uh, can stay alive. Which, so long as you have your number one barrier available to you, usually it will tank out one of her abilities no problem. Like, you can actually take one shot without having to waste a flask. But otherwise, like, this is kind of what I mean. Like, see, you slightly step to the left every single time she does that. And then, as the Shadow Hunter, of course, you're just using your ult all the time. And uh, if you need to, like, if you are almost very low on flasks because I'm using the Valorous because every time we get a crit uh, we have a chance of recovering a flask and I get crits almost all the time now, that is on a little bit of a cooldown because the Valorous Battle used to not have a cooldown on it. I think it's a 15 second cooldown or something. It should really say it on the flask because it tricks a lot of people um, or maybe it does maybe I'm thinking of the R1. Is this the one that does? No, it doesn't say it <laughs> okay, so that kind of sucks because normally it used to not have a cooldown and thus it was very very overpowered And it made the revenant the tankiest character in the game because you could just spam your potions Essentially and keep yourself alive as opposed to now the revenant is not really as good as he used to be But it, either way never mind my rants because it looks like we're gonna have no problem whatsoever here She's already almost dead uh, the point that I was trying to make is the chakras are actually really good for uh, you just swap over to a prowling Shadow Cat or the Samantha Cat just so that you can heal out with so long as you have a character with attack damage and either way let's actually use our Eclipse key right now see if we got anything lucky a Shadow 3 a Shadow 3 and a Shadow 1, although I think I got this one from Pinata. So as you can see, the drop rate absolutely sucks. <laughs> it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, and then of course we ended up getting a bunch of empowered boxes. But either way, I'll open those in another video. Thanks for watching everybody. I very much appreciate it. That's Ultra Daughter uh, in the bag right there. That's pretty much it. Also that right there is the... Uh, Dark the evil Pegasus which you end up winning from a contest I'll never be able to make a video on it because I never get the chess and thus uh, Even if I did I would never have the RNG to actually get one of those things But either way the fancy thing about it is it's a flying mount that has your wings advertised all the time But either way, thanks for watching. I very much appreciate it. Don't forget to hug Duke in the like button It very much helps me out subscribe to your favorite shine and stay epic everybody Believe